Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel, Heir of Carthage here. And, you know, it was interesting today, I was scrolling through on my phone, you know, as you probably shouldn't do, because it's a place to get lost and waste a whole bunch of time. But nonetheless, I was doing it, and I saw an article from, I believe it's Gamer Rant? And I'll try and leave a, con uh, a link to this in the, in the description. Yeah, Game Rant, sorry. Um, so Game Rant has a, an article where they said, that here's the six hardest legendary starts in Total War Warhammer 3. And I thought it might be fun to take a look at some of these starts and see if we agree on whether they got it right with why it's the hardest start. And the first one on their list, and I don't think their list was in, like, order of hardest, you know, but, but number one on the list was Archon the Black. Um, and we take a look at Archon. Let's go ahead and flip this uh, legendary very hard. And I, I'm going to leave, like, I'm not going to uh, to fix the stats modifier or anything else like that. I'm just going to leave it on really hard. These are not campaigns that I intend to play all the way through. I don't know if we find something really fun. Maybe we will. But this is just to make sure that we're going to get the, the total challenge, right, of legendary. I do have two mods on. One is to improve the camera. And another one is just to allow you to recruit defeated legendary lords, which arguably could make things easier, but it, for the purposes of this demonstration really shouldn't matter. But let's load up an Archon campaign. Now they say Archon the Black is difficult in their article because they say it's being overextended. It says he starts the campaign in the south near the western coast. It gives him room to overextend um, and he'll quickly find himself with uh, dwarf uh, war machines, Bretonian Cav, Tomb Kings, and basically saying that you can get overwhelmed. Um, so in any case, we will see. Uh, but they say Archon's one of the hardest. Now, this may be the case. I can think of a few things that Archon has going for him, though, in the sense that Tomb Kings don't pay upkeep on their units. They do only have a limited number of good units until they get enough buildings out there to increase that number. But again, a huge benefit of not having to pay upkeep. Your research is a little bit slow to get you more armies. Um, but as you do build power with Tomb Kings, I do find them to be quite powerful in the sense that you can field quite a few armies. So let's take a look here. By the way, over the last few days, um, I struggled to get a couple of videos out because I actually, my computer needed some upgrades. Um, I've been having some crashes and stuff that I think were due to power supply going bad. So I had to replace my power supply and I decided at the same time to replace my graphics card. Um, so I upgraded the graphics card. Uh, I've got the, I went from the, AM, I was using a Radeon 6900 XT. I went to the 7900 XTX. I ain't paying NVIDIA prices these days. Just because I can afford it doesn't mean I'm doing it. Um, but in any case, yeah, so I had to get that done, so it took me out of the pocket. But let's go ahead and start, and uh, this is probably going to be a little bit heck Well, I mean, it shouldn't be too hectic because it's Bretonia, but remember that the, the difficulty modifiers are on. So we'll go get a feel for what this is like, uh, meaning that the AI will probably get higher defense and leadership. Um, it will be difficult for us to fight um, in the way I normally do. Now, when I like playing campaigns, I don't mind playing very hard or sometimes even legendary. I just don't like the stats modifiers that come in on the battle, and so that's why I don't do it a lot. Some of you may like that, and you may like the challenge it poses. For me, I guess the reason I hate it most is because it just breaks the balance of the game. So if your objective is to just get hard for the sake of hard, you know, I think it accomplishes that. Um, and, you know, if you enjoy that, then by all means, go for it. Uh, but for me, I'm not a fan. Um, it just breaks the balancing of the game. And on Rome 2, gosh, it was even worse. Like, I I played some Rome 2 campaign recently trying to film one of those, and I just I couldn't get it done. Like, there were so many glitches and stuff. The battles were awful. Like, nothing was even worth recording, unfortunately. So I think I'm just going to do some multiplayer with that. Um, these hex rates are going to be really important units to us. The ability to cause terror, oh, they're going to be needed against, they're going to be needed against those uh, knights. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. We're at a, we're at kind of a big downhill disadvantage here. They've got a trebuchet though, so I can't just sit on my butt. But I don't like this position. I'm going to back down the hill a little bit here. And I might swing around and see if we can go get a hit in with their bats. We were about to start getting shot by their archers. They've got an excellent position on that hill. I could back up all the way 
like this. Um, yeah, like get to the edge of the woods where it would give us some cover. I could sacrifice our bats over here and I, I just, I don't know that it's going to succeed in taking down the trebuchet. Yeah, see, it got their archer's attention. Um, they're firing at my units. Hoping the woods will hide me. They're not going to make it easy to uh, to get to their their stuff here, but let's let's toy with them a little. Uh, I'm going to fast forward some. When they reposition, I might be able to get a hold of them. All right, everything is hidden in the woods except for the single skeleton spear. And I'm hoping he will go hidden here at any moment. Are they going to turn to face my bats? I don't know how the AI is going to react to this. Let's see how well CA's programmed them. Okay, all of my units are hidden again, except for this spear now. It's in kind of a little opening there. Let's drop it back just a little bit, put it in the hiding. So now they won't have any target for the trebuchet except for my bats. Their trebuchet is right in the middle of a bunch of units. They're just running in circles at the moment because it's like they don't know what to do. I could bring out Archon. I don't know whether the AI would be dumb enough to waste their ammunition on this game mode. It's possible they won't be stupid enough to fire at Archon with the trebuchet. We could attempt it. <clears throat> anyway, I mean, it is legendary, so that's why I'm trying to take advantage of it. This is another reason why I don't like playing on these settings, because I, I, if this were a normal battle, like, I could fight it and I could find my advantages, um, but you just can't really here, because, you know, if you go head 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 with these guys, you just lose. Um, so it just it makes things a little bit stale and, and boring to me. Uh, but again, we're testing the legendary here. So that's our objective, and so we're going to do it. I'm going to keep it in fast forward. I'm just looking for an advantage. I'm kind of studying the AI's behavior here and see if I can find something I like. Like, if I land those bats, they are not going to last. Um, they're not going to get the job done. Uh, it might distract the trebuchet for a second, but I think we're just going to have to face the trebuchet at this point and try and maybe get a slightly better angle here coming up the hill. So I'm going to go ahead and come out of the woods. As the AI repositions to face us, you know, maybe we can gain some advantage. So, like, for instance, if I come and attack now, will that cause maximum disruption, potentially? Because I'm moving out here, and they're going to want to get in range, but this will call the attention of their units when they need it to be focused on me. So I don't know. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move forward and find out. I'm not going to get a ton done. I actually already have gotten way more done against the trebuchets than I would have imagined. I'm going to see if I can pull out of this fight and just keep landing on the trebuchets. It's It worked rather well, actually, all things considered. I'm trying to pull into range. Okay, my bats. That actually worked extraordinarily well. I, I ended up accomplishing more than I could have hoped for there. Okay. I need my archers to get inside of range. Theirs are moving around as well. And I need to mimic the pattern of their knights errant with my cavalry. That knights errant is going for my crypt ghouls. I do not want that. I'm going to move the ghouls back. They're very important to me in this fight. Now I should be able to come back forward. Wait, how did these guys get into melee mode? My bad. Go ahead and attack them. Okay, good start, good start. Let's go after their lord with Archon and our Tomb Prince. Let's try and outflank a little bit here. We're going to tear their knights apart, which is really good for me. Let's start using some of our advantages here. Our guys are trying to chase here because 
the unit they were attacking routed, so I gotta make sure and get the right attack orders clicked here. Got some good damage on the Bretonian Lord already. He is doing a tremendous amount of disruption on my archers just by himself, um, which is very annoying, but he has a horse, and we don't. So, that's a big deal. Now, fortunately, these are Bretonian units, and their leadership is rather poor, unless they are a lord or lady of Bretonia. Okay, I think I may have finally got my archers free of this guy. This battle hasn't been too bad. He's running away from me still, though. Yeah, he's going after my archers still. I could hit him with my... Um, I could potentially hit him with my... Oh, this unit's crumbling. That sucks. I don't want a unit to crumble because then we'll lose it and have to re-recruit it. So that is really unfortunate. This unit's now even crumbling. See how rough it is in, on us in terms of leadership? And then, like, for instance, they have peasants up here that are basically unbreakable. Their lords, like, fighting into the face. Right, hurry, hurry, hurry. Kill him. Be done with him. They shall perish. All right, good. I'm going to end this battle before any of my units completely crumble. Uh, end battle. There we go. Hopefully we'll escape with them. But yeah, you can definitely feel the uh, the danger of the leadership system working against you there. But, you know, that wasn't too bad. Because of Archon's um, spirit leech, because of the Tomb Prince there being a good hitter in melee, the Crypt Ghouls are very effective against Bretonian peasant infantry. They're just not well protected against archers. Our own archers are quite capable. Um, they should be able to hold their own against the Bretonians. And then Hex Wraiths, honestly, like if you're not going into the face of magic attacks, they're some of the best cavalry in the game, period. Like, uh, just end, end of story there. Uh, we could get Canopic Jars. I'm gonna actually take a little bit of replenishment because I don't know if we're gonna have to fight again here soon. There's an enemy settlement just across here. And typically speaking, we're gonna want to capture as much as we can, as quick as we can, hopefully. It's your Kalos Palace. So we've got this. That settlement has... Uh, it's, it's a garrison, but it's not a very good garrison. I think we can take it down. Just remind myself. So we got men-at-arms, men-at-arms, spears, peasants, and some archers. Um, with our hex race, we should be able to easily deal with that. So let's see what we can do just all in turn one. Again, we were told this was one of the hardest ones. Maybe we have to play longer to find out just how hard it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and auto-resolve this, though you probably shouldn't auto-resolve some of these if you think you can do better, but we'll, we'll auto-resolve that one just to save a, save a few moments. All right, so we secured our very first province on the first turn. I would say that's probably a good thing. And then what would we want to do? We're probably going to have to use quite a few cheap units. Arrows of Asaf is honestly pretty good um, as far as an upgrade goes. But if we look at the, the blue tree down here, Soul Reaper is pretty handy to help us replenish faster. Um, Canopic Jar Hoarder is very handy because you get lots of good stuff from the Mortuary Cult. Mortuary Cult, sorry. Using the wrong words here. Buffing our units would be nice, though, too, because we need to overcome... We need to overcome the disadvantage that we have um, with the... the battle difficulty. We'll spread control. Uh, what, if anything, can we recruit at the moment? Um, well, this is good. We actually have access to some good stuff here. Um, and again, we don't pay upkeep. And we don't pay recruitment cost, either. So that is another benefit that the Tomb Kings get. You can usually make rather large armies rather early. Uh, there's just no guarantee that they're going to be particularly powerful armies. But um, dire wolves are going to be actually very dangerous for Bretonia skirmishers and stuff. And they give me tremendous speed. Crypt ghouls will be very dangerous again. Lack of armor, understood. But, um, you know, it's not that bad. So let's go ahead and do some recruiting. We'll want to stay on the move. And as far as research goes... We're going to want to get a hold of a second army just as quickly as we can get a hold of it. And um, it's going to take 15 turns. So we're going to start that um, process. I believe in the Canopic Jars, you can actually get a second army as well. So if I go to the Mortuary, yeah, army capacity. we got to have 10,000 treasury and 800 jars. So it is not a, it's not a small hurdle uh, to overcome, by the way. So 
Something to, to keep in mind, though. There are some other units in there that would be handy as well. Money will usually be tight with Tomb Kings, and your best bet for money is going to be to go win it in battle. Um, however, you kind of run into this weird thing where you, you know, I usually like to have defenses, but as far as the Tomb Kings go, wow, that's a really good building chain there. You also have to have buildings to be able to recruit things, and if you don't have those buildings in place, like, your recruitment level is down. Now, Nehekara Warriors would be useful, as they're going to be specifically anti-infantry and have a little more armor than Crypt Ghouls. The Crypt Ghouls have the poison. Having some cavalry would be particularly useful here, too, because there's a lot of cav in play for Bretonia. And then the other option is that we can get some Ushabti. Uh, Ushabti, being able to get to that Great Bow is a big deal as well, because Ushabti Great Bow are tremendously dangerous um i like a shabti we only get one unit of a shabti here so i think i'm going i i will let's go ahead and do the shabti building maybe i'm going down the wrong tree here but that little bit of armor piercing could be pretty handy again we need settlements in order to build buildings to be able to recruit better troops in higher numbers um so i'm going to really focus on getting out there and taking settlements because that is going to be our power now they talked about again in the article that overextending was going to be a challenge and it will be we're gonna have 15 turns until we can field another army the good news is though is that when we do um get that second army we can field a second army at no cost and use it to defend the things that we already hold so i feel like that again i the tomb king's not paying that upkeep Maybe this is a tough spot. spot location, and the article was focused on location. Tough starts. Um, but I feel like Tomb Kings have that enormous benefit of being able to get large armies quickly and not having to deal with some of the same challenges. So our territory breaks right here. We're not going to be done recruiting. Or sorry, replenishing, but I am going to move forward. We'll continue replenishing. I can't reach their settlement on this turn anyway. But what I can do... So I can get in here and add some troops. I'm trying to look for a nice balance here. Um, as far as what I can get. Um, I mean, we could get another dire wolf. And I probably will. And then we could get a lot of bats. Bats would be handy to just be a disruption to the enemy. They can stop cavalry charges. They can land on the trebuchet. Like you saw, they can land on archers. But I do already have a bunch of dire wolves. Just trying to think from an infantry standpoint, it probably wouldn't hurt me to get a couple extra spears to help take down cavalry and an extra skeleton here. Um, and that's going to completely fill out our army for now. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, we do have a right available to us. Um, it's going to hit a sandstorm and it gives us sand veil, uh, which we can use. Uh, not terribly important. It's going to take some money. I just I don't know that we need to run that right now. Let's actually save our money. We might find a better use for that money. There's no one really invading our territory, and that particular right is very good when someone's invading your territory. You all tell me what you think of this start, by the way. Um, what do you think is the hardest legendary start? Do you think Game Rant got it right with uh, Archon in the top six? And by the way, let me go through their top six real quick. Um, it was Malagor was on the second on their list. Again, I don't believe these were in order of what they said was difficulty. Um, and then next on their list was Grombrindle the White Dwarf. Uh, I could actually see Grombrindle. Manfred was on there. Kind of see that one too because isn't Isabella and, and uh, Vlad nearby, Dwarves nearby, Empire nearby, Kislev nearby, Greenskins nearby. I mean, I can see that one. Um, and then we've got Kugath. I've never played Kugath and probably never will unless they make a major change in the next DLC. And then uh, Mazda Mundi was the last one. That was an interesting one. He is in kind of a precarious start position in terms of people around him not liking him. But they they mention in the article, they say that he's kind of a weak lord. And I'm like, huh? Mazda Mundi? I mean, I guess in some ways. Like, he's not a melee lord, but you get Zlock and some magic. And that dude is an absolute nightmare um, with all the blob busting spells. And he has like 10,000 hit points or something on Zlock. Um, so, I mean, it's it's pretty amazing. We're gonna go hit um, Lady Rapans here. And we can just auto-resolve now because we've got the army put together. We've got a full army. And see, the more battles we win, the more jars we get, the more money we get. 
as we get the money we can use that to to make building upgrades which will be important to us because again you're not going to make a lot of income with the tomb kings so you definitely want to be out winning battles it helps us level up which again gonna make us more powerful we got sun scorched bones and this applies to all of our infantry so this seems like it'd be well it doesn't apply to crypt ghouls i'm, I'm assuming any upgrades we get to crypt ghouls would come from the special tree under if it comes at all, which it does right here. So we'd get extra attack and leadership. Charge bonus for Hex Race, Dire Wolves. Okay. So Legions of Death would give them a little bit of an upgrade. And then we get Right Hand and a Gash here, which gives them more hit points. And then extra magic So you can get a couple upgrades for those units. But Sun Scorch Bones would apply to all of our standard Tomb King ones. And I think that would be a relevant upgrade. Let's go to our Tomb Prince here. Um, spread control can be somewhat handy, especially when you're going to need to overcome, again, the difficulty, but I usually like to just start filling out this tree. Um, let's go ahead and end ourselves another turn here. And s I, we should have better numbers than Rapans because we're hitting her early, and again, as the Tomb Kings, we get the benefit of massive numbers very quickly. Uh, but, again, the downside being is that a lot of our units are quite weak. Uh, she took off somewhere. Did she sail out? No, it looks like she went to the south and east. So she was maybe out attacking someone, which is strange. Like, I'm over here. I'm your strategic threat. I mean, I don't Maybe there's a... Impossible. Did she go and attack that settlement? I kind of feel like she did. What you ask I think we can impossible. probably trap her in there, too. If I move up... Well, she's... She's recruiting troops. I can... I can't reach there all in one turn. Dang. I'm going to move up right here, um, and I'm actually going to save enough movement points that I can get into an ambush stance. But I want to stay on my side of the, the territory. This way they can't see me or what I'm doing. And I'm hoping maybe we can hit Fryus real quick, or Fyrus, and then deal with Rapanza's army. She's got a Trebusay and some knights. We'll see what else she brings to the party. But this will also make them see a weak settlement, and we, we might get lucky and catch them in an ambush. It would require a, a pretty good deal of luck. But you never know. I've seen crazier things happen. So let's see what we get here. But again, we, we definitely are on a territory hunt. And if you all, by the way, I would love to see comments from you. Again, do you agree with their picks? Do you think the strategy I'm taking here is right? Do you think I'm... Oh, okay, so we got discovered. Um, we did not catch the ambush. It says we're going to lose. Uh, we very well might. They don't have much infantry. They've only got one, two, three, four, five infantry units. But they have a tremendous amount of cavalry and a lot of archers, which means they could be dangerous. However, if I pair my dire wolves and hex wraiths with my spearmen, and I'm able to catch those those cavalry in the wrong spots, I mean we could do well. But I mean that cavalry is very dangerous to us. Let's have some fun here. Let's let's try this. All right, I'm in the battle. And the AI is already going a little bit haywire with their cavalry here. And my dire wolves are going to just kind of end up blocking that initial charge there. Take my hex wraiths over. This is a very tricky situation for us here. Uh, Rapanz is coming headlong into us along with her helper. I'm going to try and chase with my spears and hold with my dire wolves. See if we can eat up some of their cavalry along the flank. I'm kind of committing piecemeal into a lot of these fights, though, and I don't think it's a good idea. Rapanz has already broken through back here and started a big fight with Archon that we are losing. Okay, I am trying my best to hold their cavalry down and gain some kind of advantage over their cavalry, but our infantry are getting absolutely hosed over here. I'm going to start pouring some fire that direction. I managed to gain control of their cavalry here, and I'm going to be able to break through their archers. If I can go kill a bunch of their archers, that might help turn the tables here for sure. I have a chance, but my infantry is going down in a in a complete and total mess. But we're also killing Rapans right now. 
I don't know where this is going. I don't know where it's going. It's it's ugly at the moment. But I feel like we might be gaining control of the battlefield. We routed Repens. I don't have a way to finish her, unfortunately. Okay, what's going on here? What's going on here? Let's move on down. Their archers are in big trouble. Big trouble. I'm bringing reinforcements over. We had the healing there from the Realm of Souls, which albeit temporary, is extraordinarily useful. Their knights are coming back to protect these archers. I cannot take the pressure off the archers. Look at this, they're fighting to the death. I mean, they are knights, by the way, but they are fighting to the death because of the difficulty settings. It is, it is gonna make things tremendously challenging. But again, we're doing really well against their heroes. Rapans did just come back there. I probably should have spirit leeched her. And I'm about to take out their trebuchet. That'll help with the balance of power. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna keep pouncing on these archers. No mercy for the archers. I am just harrying this cavalry still, like just relentlessly harrying it. We can now move forward over here. Rapanz is gonna get poisoned getting into there. I can target some of this. Uh, let's actually target that cavalry. And now that the hex race finished the, um, Trebuchet, I can swing back around into these archers. That summon to Shopti was absolutely clutch right there. Oh, we're in good shape now. We are in good shape now. Very good shape. Our hex rays have uh, terror as well. Um, let's, if I can get that off on Rapanz, I might be able to drop her. That would be a... Yep, we got her. Okay, so Rapanz is injured. And then if I run down... I probably have some stuff that's... Damage, but we need to run down as many of these enemies as we can. I don't have a ton of units left on the battlefield, and some of them are crumbling. My fast movers... We need to cut down as many of these routing troops as we can, because we've been given a, a real opportunity here. There we go. One of my dire wolves crumbled. That sucks. Um, and some of my units just aren't fast enough to catch up, which makes sense. Again, Tomb King's speed is not their string. I'm killing my own dire wolves right there. That's fantastic. Should have cut that fire at will. Again, just trying to kill as many of these routing units as is possible. That unit's going to get away. It's just a spearman at arms, though. Kill a bunch of these archers. All right, that should do. We definitely took some losses in the process, but we got a tremendous number of kills, um, and we hurt Rapans terribly there. Let's see what we are able to do on the turn end. We're still in friendly territory, so we'll replenish a little bit. If we can take Phyrus, um, we're going to need more troops. They'll be replenishing their armies rather quickly as well. This is that mod I told you all about where you can take on uh, other legendary lords and immortal characters. Um, but yeah, it's not helping me at the moment because there's nothing we can actually take in there. They do not have much of a garrison, but they have an army back in both of these places. This will achieve nothing. I can put three more units in my army right there. That'll achieve... Or no, no, we have to wait for the, the turn in, so I won't do that. But we can get Phyrus right now. Almost certainly without much fuss. And then we can use the global recruitment. But I mean, if you look at this, I mean, we're... I, I mean, could I get overextended here? Absolutely. And we're going to run into other factions, but there's other Tomb Kings near that we might... Uh, they won't like us a lot, but we might be able to make a friend out of them. We can try it. There's plenty of Bretonians around. These dwarves could attack me. But again, I'm only 10 turns away from a second army, and it may just be a skeleton army, but, I mean, we can field a full army. So uh, who knows what happens in uh, a few more turns here, but at least at the moment, like, I feel pretty good about our chances. Like, this is certainly seems in the realm of doable at the moment. That hard to hit there. We even got a skeletal steed, and did we grab one? Yeah. Not till rank seven with Archon. Um, this building doesn't afford me any 
It gives me a nice casualty replen rate boot, but we don't need that. We need um we need to be able to recruit things. Let's see. Take me a couple of turns, but we can get into Shabti. And we can get our crypt ghouls back. Um, but we need to replenish a little anyway. So Sorcerer, let's do that. End our turn. <clears throat> okay, I'm not gonna keep going on this forever, but this was a good demonstration. If you all think this is fun, do you want me to look at the other legendary lords? I mean, we could make a, a video for each of the ones on Game Rant's article there and see which one we think is the most difficult. You all could tell me what you think the most difficult ones are, and we could go take a look at those two. Again, not something where I'm saying I'm gonna sit here and beat the entire legendary campaign, but maybe it will be fun for us to determine which of these really are the hardest and which ones are maybe not the hardest. Um, we could look at the flip side of it, and for people looking to get that legendary achievement, <clears throat> but wanting to know the easiest path, maybe that's the direction uh, that you end up wanting to go. I don't have much speed in this army, that concerns me because I must keep my there's still Bretonian cavalry no. on the field. But honestly, if we bury it with spears, we should be okay. Like, should be okay. It's a big should be. I'm gonna grab two more spears and a skeleton warrior, and then we'll end this turn. I'll bet you we can go down and get Al Hike. We'll siege the Bretonians there, force them to come out and fight us on open ground, and then we can probably win that fight. Um, at least I feel fairly confident we could, based on the way that we've been performing. Those hex wraiths are a real boon to our army early. I'd like to see if we can take Rapans out of the picture before the end of this video, because then that'll, you know, kind of be some evidence of like, what was it like for us to, to defeat our first couple of foes in the campaign? Did we survive, for instance, for the time that we played? All right, we got our skeletal steed. That is good news. And we can finish off Sun Scorch Bones, which will have now added eight armor and six melee defense for standard Tomb King infantry, which may not sound like a lot, but you know, little bits add up. As we, as we go through this process, we can actually get all the way to the settlement here. I can actually attack this guy and then force everybody out onto open ground. Which would probably be more beneficial to us. Yep, and look at that. We can even auto-resolve it. So, there you go. We were able to get started and defeat Rapans. And go through some... Some really nice... Um, opening moves here their settlement should be ripe for the taking here as well there we go so now i've got two provincial capitals i have taken down her pans before she was able to gain any power there is another bretonian faction just here now I, this guy worries me a little bit these guys worry me a little bit so as far as getting overextended sure like i could see ways the great desert of araby now this could be fun to go get rid of those ogres because that's an interesting settlement that's probably where i would go next um, but I would imagine these Protonians are going to come and fight me soon, and so will these ones. So we'll probably want to take these guys out of the picture. But you know, one thing I could do here is I could hit Martek, and I could hand it to the, the dwarves and try and gain their favor. Um, sometimes handing over a settlement like that can be a huge boon. But in any case, hope you all enjoyed this one. Leave your thoughts in the comments, please, because your comments here are going to make a big difference in terms of helping me understand what you think about it. What do you think of their list? Take a chance to go click the link. Check out the article if you want to. Air of Carthage, signing out. I'll see you all soon with some more action in Total War, Warhammer 3.